I'm here. What's good, y'all? Thought y'all forgot about me. It's been, it's been a lot of days. This is nice. Can I touch it? Oh, it's nice. It's cool. Today I saw Coach uh, Bowman talking to you during special teams. Yeah. Not everybody has an all pro uh, as a coach. Can you uh, discuss your relationship with them and, and how has Coach Bowman uh, helped your evolution? Uh, the best thing about Bo is that he is like a player's coach and he's also a coach who was a player and not only was he just a player, he was dominant and we can see that. Like we can turn on his film, trust me he does that. He turns on his films, he wants us to know and we get to see him do the things that we want to do. So it's like, you know, we're with somebody that we want to emulate and want to be just like and I think that's the best thing about having Coach Bo. Uh, he take care of us and he knows what we're going through. He, he's probably been through every single phase from rookie to the vet. He probably had the moments where, you know, he dealt with moving on from a team. And he also had the moments where he was a specialist. And like that right there is where me and him, we talk about that. Like, hey, bro, I came in the league third round, same as me. Uh, I play special teams, same as me. And I had to go step to step to get to where, you know, I, I was or where I was, where I'm at. And I think I, I just look at that and I feel inspired. And I think that's probably like the biggest thing about, like, like you said, my, evol my evolution is like, I got a coach who cares. Many, many of the children in the city uh, face conditions similar to those that you and your father yeah. uh, faced growing up in the 60s. What message do you, uh, do you have for, uh, what message would you like to share with children growing up in your neighborhood? I mean, the biggest thing about my neighborhood is like, it's not that you gotta, you're not, you know, stuck in the circumstances that you are raised in. And I think that's the biggest thing about me is like, I look around and I grew up where I grew up, but it made me who I am. And not only did it make me who I am, it let me know that, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not inevitable. Like being stuck in, the, in like where I was, is an inevitable, like you can get out of that. And I think that's the best thing about it. I can look at kids and know like, you got potential to go do great things. And I want them to believe in themselves as much as I believe in them because I see me. And that's the biggest thing. You've taken time to develop your dreams and options have come as a result. Uh, can you describe what it feels to, to have your dreams come true? I would definitely say, like, just being in this moment, being able to talk to you guys, you know, you guys look good. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you guys look good. But being able to be in this moment, be here, talk to you guys, I think, like, that's the, the blessing right there. And you can never be satisfied. I think, like, that's the biggest thing. Like, reaching the NFL, that was a dream. But now it's like, what's next? And I haven't gotten to what's next yet. I'm not done. There's so much work to be done. I haven't made it to the point where it's like, I'm satisfied with the work that I put out. And I think that's like the biggest thing about reaching a goal. It's like, you always want to know what's next. And I think right now for me, it's, it's I got to elevate. I got to get more. I want more. I want to do more. And I think my dream is ever evolving. Can you talk to me about what the vibe is like this year at this camp? If Coach Harbaugh, how is it different? How is it the same? What's the difference between this year at Camp Chargers with Coach Harbaugh than last year? I think this year, right now, the team is just more detailed as far as like every guy is involved in wanting to win. And it kind of got lost for me being a rookie. I can't speak too much about what the vets go through, but being a rookie last year to now, I just feel like there's a different type of, of energy uh, last year was unacceptable. And I think that was just, you know, just the win total alone was unacceptable. And I feel like this year we want more as a team and that's what we're driving for. So like right there, that's that alone right there is the difference. I mean, like the mentality, the landscape is different right now just because everybody wants that one thing, that what's next, that win. And I mean, like, that's what we want to do. What do you mean by energy in terms of just, is it, is it coming from Coach Arbaugh? What do you, like, or is it just the team who were here last year trying to do better? Is it a combination? What is it? It's a combination of both. I mean, it's hardball bringing energy, but it's also, we got players who were here last year who want to do more, who want to have a, a bigger impact than what they had. Even if they were like the most impactful player on the field, they feel like they can do more. Uh, that speaks to Khalil Mack. I mean, he's one of our leaders. Uh, he's a vet and he makes an impact every time he's on that field. And he still comes to work every day. Like I can do more. And we look at that type of stuff. And then, like, the energy aspect, man, you got it. It's a little, it's a, it's a vibe, man. It's a vibe. It's, it's fun. We got Denzel Perryman in the locker room with DJ set. Like, it's a vibe, man. It's energy. It's fun. We're jubilant. We're out there trying to make plays. And I think all that correlates with the guy Harbaugh is. He wants us to have fun, love the sport, do it right. 
and, and you know, be keen on details, little things, being to the meetings on time and, and being where you need to be when you need to be there, doing what you need to do what you, when you need to do it. I think that's just all that correlates. Going back, going back to what you said about what's next for you, we've seen you obviously run with the ones. Is that the next step, you know, earning a starting role? Yeah, I'm glad you said earning because that is the next step is uh, earning that starting role. Nothing is official, but I think the biggest part for me is that is the next step. Like, I want to earn that spot. I want to earn that trust, and not only from the coach, but from my players, from my teammates. And I think that's what I've been on the road to do. I put in extra work to do it. I spend more time in the building, and I try to make sure I spend more time with my body alone. I want to be the guy, like, you know what I'm saying, they can look at and know he's out there for the right reasons. He's out there because he wants to be, you know what I'm saying, on that field. And when I say for the right reason, I mean for that, for that win, for that team, like for the team, for that aspect of it. And I feel like that's my next step. Like you said, I got to earn it first. And nothing is done without the work and the effort put into it. DJ talked about what, what makes you good in coverage, mm -hmm. and he mentioned your, your patience. Where does that come from as a linebacker? He said there's a lot of linebackers in the league who – you know, might want to jam guys or get physical, yeah. but he says that you have a lot of patience. Where do you where do you think that comes from for you in coverage? I mean, the biggest thing for like linebackers. I mean, even me. Sometimes I get into that that meathead mentality where you want to just hit somebody. You want to just feel the contact. I can definitely say my first uh, day back with pads. I feel like I had something to prove every play. Like I feel like I because we always talk about my pass coverage. No one knows like. I'm still keen on the running game. Like, I still go downhill. Like, that's still something that I live for. So, that being said, as a linebacker, we have those moments where we're a little over aggressive, but I have the background of being both a receiver and safety, where it's like we're looking for a guy who's too aggressive with his hands. We can, you know what I'm saying? So, I want to bring that to my, my coverage skill set. So, I look for those moments where I can just, you know, re my, have a reset, get my hand up, and mirror technique more than be aggressive, put my hands in the chest because, you know what I'm saying, these, this is NFL. Some guys won't let you touch them. That's when you have to slow down. Like, you don't want to be too aggressive. You, you got to be able to get your hands on, mirror the hip, and so forth. Play today, the play today that where Easton dumped it off to Stone. Yeah. In the, I mean, does a play like that in camp make you, like, really want to get into live action so you can, <laughs> you can actually hit somebody? <laughs> I'm glad you see it. Uh, we have a million different tempos. So that kind of, you know, you have to get with the vibe. I think Harbaugh is really set on practicing like a pro and building a bully. These are things he says. Building a bully, uh, getting the healthiest team to the game. And as much as I live for those moments, I also live for a healthy stone. You know what I'm saying? So a healthy stone. Like, I, I would love to do that to him. But it's also, it's not like, that's not, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm cool with hitting the next guy. I can't wait to hit the tight end for the Seahawks. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what I'm looking forward to more than Stone. I can't wait, bro. I just can't wait. Did you like the reaction on the sideline after it, though? I feel like everyone was sort of saying, like, oh, I mean, you, live. Like, <laughs> you know. Stone know. He, he knows. But also, like I said, it would never be my guy. Like, yeah. I know Stone. He got that spotty sense. He got that spotty sense. He felt me. I, it's just, you know, one of those bang, bang plays. It kind of just happens. But uh, I'm just, like I said, looking forward to the Seahawks tight end that. It ain't no leash. Let me off. So then it won't be like we know. It's like it happened. How did, how did the city form you in, into the linebacker that you are? I mean, the city is built on just like that, that strength and that was within it. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm from the inner city, the district, to be exact. And it's not, it's not sweet. You know what I'm saying? So the biggest thing for me being a linebacker, like it's, it's exactly that. We are in the middle of the defense. Uh, if I'm correlating to the inner city, like we in the middle of the streets, we in the middle of the hood, we in the middle of the defense, and people are looking at you for the answer. And I think that right there, that correlates for me is because I'm in the middle of the defense and I have to both be in pass, in run, and be dominant in both. Then I look in my city and it's like, you know what I'm saying, I'm coming from out from under, and you gotta be able to, to withstand the streets and then the books, because it took books to get here. You know what I'm saying? So like, that's. That's the, you know what I'm saying, just playing both sides of that fence. I know Herbie has had a huge uh, impact and influence in your life. Uh, what would his message be to you if he was still with us? I mean, definitely it would be, you know what I'm saying, don't be complacent because just looking at his path, his journey, and, and who he became, you can see that 
he hit a lot of milestones. Like he hit a lot of things he wanted to get done before he was taken from us. And he still wanted more. So I think that would definitely be his message to me is like, don't get complacent. Like we said, I'm trying to earn a role and I can be perfectly fine with being on the unofficial depth chart as a starter, perfectly fine with being a starter since OTAs, but it's 17 games plus, you know what I'm saying? That plus being we want to we want we want to go far. I can't be complacent with where I'm at right now. It's so much more to be done.